Even the samples brought back from the moon by the first astronauts did not solve the controversy between impact or volcanic action. Many of the rock samples were solidified lava, but in the so-called lunar soil, there were large numbers of tiny glass droplets of a variety of shapes. Under the microscope, they were all seen to be covered by tiny craters formed by high-speed impacts of very tiny particles, micrometeorites. So there is direct evidence of impacts on a small scale, but can one therefore conclude that there have been large impacts? Especially since the glassy spheres themselves are very similar to the volcanic glass droplets from volcanic ash on the Earth. So even the most obvious aspects of the moon are the subject of great controversy. The origin of the moon is discussed with high-powered scientific theories, pro and con. The origin of the craters is also still not certain. Every piece of information that we gain about the moon seems to raise more questions rather than answer questions. In these circumstances, the manned flights to the moon have added a great deal of information which has been very valuable in solving a lot of the puzzles. The latest Apollo flights were those which yielded the best film, and we've culled some shots from two of those flights in order to bring back the spirit of those Apollo adventures. Dave Scott, the commander of Apollo 15, had already flown in Gemini 8 and Apollo 9. He would explore the lunar service with Jim Irwin, while Al Warden, the third member of the crew, the command module pilot, remained in lunar orbit operating cameras and experiments. The Saturn rocket lifted off on schedule, and apart from a few minor problems, the launch and the three-day flight toward the moon, was uneventful. The usual large crowd watched the launch at the Cape Kennedy Space Center. The landing site chosen for Apollo 15 lay close to the foot of one of the main highland areas of the moon, the Apennine Mountains, which tower about 15,000 feet or 500 meters above the floor of the great flat Mare Imbrium or Sea of Rains. Their landing site also lay within visiting distance of Hadley Rill, the sinuous lunar canyon about 400 meters deep, which has always been an enigmatic puzzle for lunar observers. The area had been selected by geologists as likely to be one of the most significant and varied geological sites on the moon. Even from the lunar landing craft, Scott and Irwin were able to observe more clearly than ever before the layering produced by successive lunar lava flows on this mountainside called Silver Spur. Many of those lava flows are up to 60 feet thick. It was during the second day of their exploration that Scott and Irwin made perhaps their most significant discovery when they recognized and collected a fragment of the rock of the lunar highlands. Rock samples brought back by earlier flights had included basalts produced by volcanic action and breccias caused by impact. But Scott and Irwin's anorthosite, the light-colored rock, because of its richness in plagioclase feldspar, was the first sample of its kind. It was the star exhibit of the Apollo 15 flight. The Apollo 15 astronauts landed just about here. The highland area is light colored and the dark area is the margin of the Mare Imbrium. The anorthosite which was collected by the Apollo 15 crew had 
previously, in fact, been found, but only as very small fragments in breccia. This was the first hand specimen of a northazite which had been found by the astronauts. The Apollo 16 crew were the crew which first visited Sudbury in 1971, and their successors, the Apollo 17 crew, you remember, were also here, and their flight yielded some very splendid and sometimes rather amusing form. The launching of Apollo 17 took place on the evening of December the 6th, 1972. Eugene Cernan, the crew commander, had already orbited the moon as commander of Apollo 7. Although this was the last Apollo flight, it was the first on which a professional scientist had flown. Dr. Harrison, or Jack Schmidt, was trained as a geologist in California and then in Harvard. Schmidt and Cernan were to be the last two Apollo astronauts to sample the lunar surface, but as always, much of the work was to be done by the unsung hero of the command module, the pilot, Ron Evans, who would remain in orbit around the moon with his batteries of cameras and experiments. With the countdown completed, the Saturn rocket generated its seven and a half million pounds of thrust. Once in Earth orbit, the astronauts checked out the craft and then began the complex maneuvers which freed the com command module and the lunar landing craft from the boosters of the Saturn rocket. After the three-day coast to the moon, the rather ungainly looking lunar landing craft parted company from the command module to begin its descent to the surface of the moon. Ron Evans remaining in the command module to orbit the moon for three more days. In a preliminary orbit with the command module beneath them in the distance, the astronauts passed over their landing place, a flat valley in an area called Taurus Littoral, where they would look for young lunar rocks and signs of volcanic activity. The landing on the valley floor was one of the most accurate of the Apollo program, the dust flying as the astronauts inched toward the surface. Contact. Stop push. Engine stop. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Roger, Challenger, that's super. Houston, you can tell America that Challenger is a torrent literal. First Sun and then Schmidt left the lunar module to begin their exploration. As I step off at the surface at Torres Littrell, we'd like to dedicate the first step of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. Their first job was to unload equipment, including their rover, the electric car, in which they would drive to the exploration sites. They also began setting up the instruments of the automatic laboratory, which would transmit signals back to Earth after they left. Hey, do you need me, Gene? Nope. Yep. I'm gonna go deploy an LSEP. Have at it. Okay, Bob, I've got my tools of the trade right here. Drilling core samples of the so-called lunar soil was one of their first t early tasks as Houston plotted their position. Pulling core was not always, however, as easy as they anticipated. Yeah, well, we're, out, we're out in the ejector blanket of Camelot for sure now. Yeah. Man, it didn't feel like this stuff was that hard. No, I'll get it. I knew there was something I needed to get do. Get the jack in over here, other side. Let me, let me uh, put some weight here. He's going anywhere. Oh, he's going slowly, though. Very slowly. I'm going to get this thing out now that I got it. Boys, you know, that's what you call getting down into your work. 